Hi, this is Gilles, the radio prepper. In this video, I'm going to be building and testing a half-wave unfed antenna for the 6 meter band in FM. So 50 to 54 megahertz, 52 megahertz in France. Now the FM portion, of course, is a little bit higher uh, inside the 6 meter band and I often call on 51.5 or 51.6.7. These antennas work extremely well on HF but on VHF it's been a little bit of a problem for me and I suspect these antennas uh, half wave and fed don't work as much uh, or as well for VHF and UHF Otherwise, we would see them everywhere because they're so efficient. And I'm using a design from my mate Alex, VK2PRC. I say mate because <laughs> he's in Australia and he's an expert on military radios. I think the problem on VHF and UHF is the matching, the impedance matching using toroids. Uh, there is something there that doesn't quite work on higher frequencies and if there is an RF engineer here somewhere listening to this, please let me know why that is. But I haven't seen commercial antennas that are half-wave and fed with the uh, uh, impedance transformer at the bottom on commercial radios or commercial antennas. Alex is kind enough to let me use some of his footage, so let's look at his design. Okay, just been uh, doing a bit of um, experimenting with um, a 140 um, 61 mixed toroid. Just trying to um, get something worked out as far as the um, six meter bands concerned for making an NFED. Um, here I've got 2.5k load resistor, which simulates the antenna. I've got a two to six uh, turns ratio on the um, on the toroid. I'm getting a pretty good match up around the six meter band so the, the circuit the um the uh frequency that i got selected here is, is 52 52 megs and um let's just have a bit of a look right across the band so i'll start it at the um hang on come on uh start at we'll start it at about uh about 49 megahertz and uh, we'll finish it around 58 megahertz stop around 58 megahertz have a look pretty well covers the um, the band so that's that's how flat it is across the band it's resonating a little bit lower down but even at that um, 52 megahertz it's a uh, one is to one 0.29 which is quite reasonable um, yeah. so if I go right to the bottom of the band at say 50 megahertz it's uh, 1 is to 1.24 and if I go right up the top I don't know where it ends somewhere about 58 or something I don't know if I go right up here to about 50, 50, 58, it's 1.5. So it's resonating just a tiny little bit low in the band, but down around the 52, 53, you know, we're looking at a match there of one, one is to 1.2. And I, I reckon if you put the right <coughs> length resident half wave on there, you'd pull that right down to almost one to one. So there you go. There's a bit of a, um, a bit of a, a a doable, easy to make uh, end fed for six meters. Oh, by the way, um, it's one millimeter, uh, one millimeter K, uh, wire, enamel wire. Yeah, two turns to six, one millimeter. The toroid is a 140 Fairchild 61 mix. It just happens that I have two FT 140 61. Now 61 material is better than 43 for a lower VHF, so I'm going to use that. One of them I'm going to make a 49 to 1 transformer, so 2 turns primary, 14 turns total. The other one I'll make 2 turns primary and 8 turns total. 
I have uh, 80 centimeters of uh, one millimeter wire. I've shown this in uh, many of my videos, so I'll be brief. I'll uh, put the BNC ground lug here, right here, at about 10 centimeters from the end, and I'll fold it like so. Now I'm going to twist those wires, I mean this wire, since it's the same wire. Just like so, and I'll keep on going until the end. You can see the result right here. We have the ground lug for the BNC, and we have uh, about 10 centimeters of twisted pair. And I left a little bit of it out here for the center connection of the BNC. Now I'm going to put the two turns primary, so I'll start here, that's one turn. Every time the wire goes through the core, that's one turn. So that should be just about long enough, so that's one. And I'll go around a second time. And those are my two turns. Now I have the ground lug here, of course, that's for the ground on the B and C and I have the center connector right here, whoops, coming out of the uh, twisted pair and I'll just keep on going with the wire. I need 14 turns total, so I'm going to go here until the, uh, keep going until the seventh turn and then I'll show you a little trick. All right, here I have seven turns. The eighth turn, I'm going to go inside the core and cross over to the other side just like so. And that's turn number eight. And that's going to be turn number nine. So here we have nine turns and I'll keep going until I get to 14. And here I have my 14 turns and that's a 49 to one transformer because 14 turns total, that's two to 14. So that's a seven to one ratio and 7 squared is 49, so this is going to divide the impedance by uh, 50, basically. The center of the BNC goes here, the ground lug is here, the antenna wire is right here. Here I'm just going to solder the BNC, the uh, center connector. Of course this is just temporary because uh, ultimately, of course, it will go inside the box. And I'll solder the ground lug as well. I just want to basically determine which of the two transformers is going to work best. On the other side, uh, for the antenna wire, I just soldered the lug, and once again, it's temporary because uh, this will go in a box and it will have a permanent uh, half wave wire attached. And here we have the second one, which has two turns primary, just like the first one, but it has eight turns total, so. That's a four to one ratio, four squared equals 16. So this should be a 16 to one transformer. Now, which one is going to work best on six meters? I have no idea. I just have to test them. And actually I couldn't help myself. I made a third one <laughs> for my friend Alexander. Uh, this one is a 49 to one transformer as well. It has three turns primary. 21 turns total, so that's a uh, 21 divided by 3, that's 7, and also 7 squared, 49, so 49 to 1 transformer. It has more turns because that's for HF, it's from 80 to 10 meters. It's not going to work on 6 meters, actually I'm not even sure it's going to work well on 10 meters, but that's why I have a capacitor here, a 100 picofarad capacitor, high voltage, uh, 3000 volts, because uh, that's going to help on the uh, upper HF. But uh, I know it's going to work extremely well on 80 meters, 40 meters, and I'm sure up to 20 meters. This is an FT140-43. 43 material is used for HF. So today I am at the park and I'm just going to test the antennas, the uh, transformers for uh, 
best SWR. I won't know yet uh, which one will be more efficient, even if they're both going to work. I don't know yet, but I have my antenna analyzer and I'm going to plug them in. I'm not going to be operating today. I didn't bring a radio. I just brought my antenna analyzer and that's it. I brought my uh, six meter pole here, which is going to be uh, way sufficient. Of course, it only has two elements out right now, but I'm going to put it a little bit higher. I'll start with the uh, 49 to 1 transformer. That's the one that has uh, two turns primary and 14 turns total. Now I have uh, two wires, two three meter wire, one for each transformer, because I uh, suspect uh, I might end up with different lengths depending on which one I use. Here's the tip of the antenna. Here it is ready to test now. I know that the wire is going to be too long, but uh, well, oh, here I have my uh, RG316 cable, five meters, that goes to the antenna analyzer. So let's see how it does. As expected with the three meter wire, the uh, resonant frequency is pretty low between 46 and 47 megahertz. After cutting it bit by bit, I got up to 51 MHz, almost where I wanted. SWR is 1.5 to 1, which is great. Unfortunately, I cut another couple inches off and the SWR went up to 2 to 1 and resonates about, you know, between 52 and 52.5 MHz and that's kind of surprising. And now I've plugged in Alex's transformer, uh, 16 to 1, I believe, and we'll see how that works. So the wire on the 49 to 1 transformer ended up being 2.65 meters. Actually, it's a little bit high. It resonates on 52 megahertz. So probably I would say uh, 2.7 meters would be the best. I tried the 16 to 1 transformer on the same wire. 2.65 meters and it was resonant on 57 megahertz. On the 3 meter wire for the 16 to 1 transformer, surprisingly I get two dips. One at uh, about 49 megahertz and one at 57. I'm going to ignore the one at 57 uh, because I know that the real frequency is uh, most likely on 49 but with a much better SWR. With the 49 to 1 transformer, the SWR is 2 to 1. With the 16 to 1 transformer, it seems to be about 1.2 to 1. But that was of course on 57 MHz, so now I have installed the uh, 3 meter wire that I have, and uh, I'm going to measure the uh, frequency, and we'll see how much wire it takes to uh, go down to about 51.6 MHz. And after cutting it a few times, I got the first dip uh, just where I want it, slightly above 51 megahertz. Here is a better look and a better SWR than my 49 to 1 transformer. The second wire ended up being 2.85 meters long on the same 52 megahertz frequency. 2.65, 2.85, that's um, 20 centimeters difference, uh, that's quite a bit. Now the higher dip that I noticed on the analyzer would have required a much longer wire than 3 meters and so it wouldn't have been a half wave and I would rather have a real half wave antenna, an antenna that's closest possible to half wave than having a longer cable with a lower SWR so I was getting a little bit of a higher SWR but the antenna is much closer to a half wave so should be radiating better than a longer one. It's a little bit of a perplexing result because uh, the 49 to 1 transformer didn't have a second dip it only had one dip 2 to 1 SWR so not as good but less bizarre. <laughs> The 16 to 1 has two dips and that's really weird to me anyway. And one of them, I believe, uh, wasn't really uh, the right one. The frequency was just too high. So how they're going to perform, I don't know. Now I have to test them with someone on the other end. 
make a contact, switch antennas and see which one works better. And that will be for another day. I might also try to add a capacitor like I do for HF and see if that changes anything. Alex is of the opinion, like many people, that a half-wave and fed needs a counterpoise. Now, I'm not quite sure about that. Uh, I tend to disagree a bit because uh, a half-wave and fed is a full-size antenna, just like a dipole. And with a dipole, uh, generally, you don't have any common mode current problems. So you shouldn't have any common mode current problems on an unfed half-wave, the antenna has the same length. Now of course I operate QRP, so low power, so I might not notice. Probably uh, there is always a little bit of current on the coax shield and if you up the power at some point you're going to feel it or it's going to cause some trouble with the electronics. I'm very curious to see if at 20 or 50 watt output I will feel anything if I touch the uh, shield of the coax, uh, the BNC connector. That would be interesting, probably not pleasant with 50 watts, but I don't know, I'm gonna have to test that. I didn't use a counterpoise for any of those tests, so who knows. Alex said that uh, his analyzer was showing, uh, actually no, he had a, a field strength meter and he said that uh, using a counterpoise was uh, producing a much stronger field, so a much better radiation. And that's possible, but theoretically, I, I just don't see the reason for it. But of course, the proof is in the pudding, so I might try it with a counterpoise and see what happens. Now, Alex has another video that he made uh, making a uh, transformer for his uh, PRC351. And this is my PRC351. Uh, I'll put the link in the description. I highly suggest also that you subscribe to his channel because he has a lot of good stuff. I copied his design here with a cutting board. I have a box, this is a Hammond case and a BNC connector. And I have a long 3 8 by 24 uh, nut here that will uh, accommodate a whip antenna. And I happen to have a 2.85 meter whip antenna, which is perfect. I might have to shorten it a little bit, but it will be great to have a whip antenna, a half wave antenna directly on the PRC351. Now, Alex used a T106-2 powdered iron core for his transformer. He made it with three turns primary and 21 turns total. But he had, you know, he took one turn off, checked the SWR, took a second turn off and ended up with 19 total turns. So uh, it's not quite a 49 to 1. I'm going to try this as well. So I'll have three transformers to test. Now, it just happens that, uh, well, you saw my video about the uh, field strength meter that ended up in disaster <laughs> but I got another one well I did receive this very nice uh, Polish military uh, uh, micro uh, amp meter 100 uh, micro amps but problem is it doesn't fit in the case it's too long the description in eBay was wrong gave the wrong dimensions but fortunately I did order another one at the same time just in case something like that happened and it did and but this one fits, it will go in the case. So I will build a second uh, field strength meter and now I will be able to test the three transformers in the field. And also I'll try to get someone to uh, have a QSO with me. I'll switch antennas and we'll see which one works best. And of course the, <laughs> the winner is going to end up in this box. So that will be of course for another video because it's already way too long and uh, I'll see you next time. Have a good one.